And as Caroline just mentioned, FEMA is on the ground in those storm ravaged areas and more help is on the way with some insight now on what they're up against. We're joined by former presidential appointee and FEMA coordinator Mark Nouveau. Mark, in these immediate days following such a big storm, what type of assistance is most critical right now? Good evening, Julie. Right now they're concentrating on search and rescue with hundreds or more of high water vehicles, both federal volunteers, Cajun Army, Navy, all trying to help out and rescue people. They're also focusing on how do we restore energy, although that's the energy company's responsibility. The federal government's going to do whatever they can to be able to facilitate that because that's the key to recovery. And this is going to be a long recovery. It is, Mark. You mentioned rescuers and boats. Boats, helicopters, high water trucks are bringing hundreds of people who are trapped by Ida's floodwaters to safety. Tell us about the process of how crews undertake such a massive search and recovery effort. Well, it's somewhat organized chaos. You know, it's trying to get to neighborhoods, listening to local officials who can tell you where people are and how to get there. There's bringing in Coast Guard. You know that they're doing grids with satellite imagery, trying to figure out what areas they've searched, what areas they haven't. The challenge will become when they get them out of those areas that are high water, where do they go? Now, what hotels are available? Half of the state of Louisiana is without power right now. That means no water, no toilets, no food, no groceries, no communications. It's a challenging time for these folks without question. Yeah, the storm, as we were just watching, has swamped the Louisiana coast. And as you were talking about, shattered the electrical grid, leaving more than a million homes and businesses without power. And Mark, they're in stifling heat. You just mentioned some of the challenges, but they're saying it could take up to three weeks or longer to get power restored. What kinds of dangers uh, does that present to both those impacted by the storm and the crews who are trying to help? Yeah, w without question, the utility workers across the country are second only to California firefighters in being able to mobilize people to come help. So in other words, they're getting utility workers from all over the country, 25,000 of them coming to Louisiana to help them restore power. That's one. The big thing, though, here is that the high transmission, high voltage electrical lines, eight of them fell in the Mississippi River when one of the towers went in. So they've got to get people in to restore that that tower, that's going to be key no matter what. Very dangerous, wires down in the water, dangerous for the workers, dangerous for the residents. More than 3,600 FEMA employees have been deployed to this area and more help is on the way. Mark, what type of equipment and gear do they bring in and are they able to stage some of this equipment before uh, we're seeing the effects of what we're seeing now? Yes, two part question. What they do is stage resources in areas in warehouses, Texas, Atlanta. They move those forward to federal air bases so that they can have them available depending upon where they need. That's meals, diapers, tarps, bedding, water. All those things are life sustaining commodities. So they're going to be distributing those through what's known as a pod system, setting up, working with the National Guard and get those resources down into those neighborhoods to help people. That's number one. In terms of the difficulty with that, it's getting into that area that's flooded. Julie? Yeah, a huge job ahead. Mark Nouveau, we will leave it at that. Thanks so much for your time tonight. We appreciate it. You're welcome.